do this, and we're not even going to know what it is. So he says, Behold, I will show unto you a new thing. It shall spring forth, ye shall not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers of the desert. Now those are some new things. Those are some new things. So he's telling them, don't remember the old stuff. I'm going to bring you through some new things. I'm going to bring you through a new way. I'm going to use what you have learned, and I'm not going back there anymore. Forget about back there. I'm going ahead. I'm going in a new thing. So in other words, whatever you've been through, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't, ain't seen nothing yet. Because God's going to bring you through some things. Now, I'm saying all this to say this. Some of you are dwelling on old things. The churches are the main people that dwell on old things. That's why you can't get young people. Churches can't get young people because they always talk, talk about old things. About how they did it in the past. About, oh, how we did it in the past. Don't you know God's ready to do something new? Oh, a new stuff that you hadn't done before. Now we live in the old stuff all the time. I mean, the only way I can stay married to my wife is if we're new every year. Man, we were old year after year after year. We get tired of one another. And eventually, it won't be no good. We may stay together because we are together out of necessity. But man, I'd rather be together out of love than necessity. Just because you've been together, you're used to each other, and you're staying. No, you need to love one another. And love only comes out of a new thing. But we so used to just doing old things in old ways. Then we say, oh, let's get the young folk in the church. How are we always doing the old stuff? How are we always doing old stuff? And even old people don't want to be around old things. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was young, I used to be in the street band. And our street band played, uh, I guess, today's vocal music or whatever. And I was in the street band, you know, play Earth, Wind, Fire, Commodore, all that old stuff that some of y'all know about. You know, and so we went to this uh, retirement home. And you know, we had this um, oldies but goodies set. You know, played 1950 some of the platters because we had some you know, good singers, right? So we stopped playing that stuff, and uh, old people came to us and said, Look, we don't want to hear that. <laughs> we hear that, and here y'all play some of the stuff that y'all play. So I'm going to old people don't want to be around old things. That's why you can go to a cabaret and you see old people on the floor. <laughs> But then you get to church and they're all changes. <laughs> Come on now. Old doesn't change. Oh, everything's old because old is religious and religious isn't of God. That's just, that's not enough. God is in relationship, not in religion. And sometimes we forget that God is in our relationship. And relationships change from day to day and from year to year. That's what we feel in a relationship with somebody. If you're in a relationship now, it's going to change over the course of a year. Your relationship is either going to grow or it's going to dissolve, depending on how new you stay and how fresh you stay in your life. You know, if you're the same, some people that you were raised with, you can't even hang out with them no more. Why is that? Because they're doing the same old things and you're on to something new. I know some of my friends that I grew up with, they still doing the same things we did when we were hanging out on the corner. I can go in my old neighborhood and they still were hanging out on the corner. Man, that was 30 years ago. And they still hanging out on the corner, drinking, smoking, shooting crap, and when they go home, they go into their mama's house. <laughs> so I can't hang out with them no more because I'm doing something new and fresh, and they're on the corner doing the same old things that they think they got going on. How can you have it going on when you're doing the same thing? And I mean, you would, sometimes we say, well, the faces change, but not the name. But God, hey, man, when I go back to my old neighborhood, the faces didn't change, neither did the names. Mother still mother. You know, um, Eric, Big Jaw still Big Jaw. Dick still Dick. Spoon still Spoon. All these names we used to call. <laughs> you know, I had one too, but I ain't telling <laughs> Because God changed my name. Man, man. Because he moved me on to a new thing. You see, so if we want to be a God, then we need to know that God is adaptable and changeable, and God is the one that's stuck in the rock. He wants us to move forward. He wants us to do fresh and exciting things in our world. He 
wants us to do things in him that we, we don't even realize him. But no one can do that looking back at the past. You know, my wife made an observation about Haiti when all of that destruction took place. And she, her observation was this. She said, look, look at what they did. Look at what the um, secular musicians did. They did, we are the world. Again! Didn't they do that before, some years ago? Yeah. The world only knows to go back to what they used to do. You notice that? Yeah. See, see, look, a lot of people miss that because we're so tied up in the health and Hades. We miss what they did. We say, oh, what a wonderful thing. They went backwards. Mm -hmm. Because they have nothing to grasp onto. The only thing the world has to grasp onto is the church when the church takes on a new freshness and air. That's why politicians need the church when they need to get elected because they need some new freshness. They don't come here, you know, to get your vote. They want a new idea so that they can appeal to other people because they know the freshness comes out of the church building. You know? And out of what the saints do. That's why they come to hear and see what's going on. Because Christians give politicians fresh perspective. That's why they come to churches when it's time to run for election. Because we have the freshness. If they stare around their own people, they have the same still old, old ideas. That's why Capitol Hill is the way it is today. Those are old ideas that they're doing. You know, I just witnessed an interview with Barack Obama and some guy on the Fox Network, and that man treated Obama like he was some kind of thug on the street. That man is the president of the United States. And he treated Obama like that because he has an old idea and an old mindset, and I can treat this man because of the color of his skin any old way I please, even though he is the president of the United States. I tell you, we need to start doing a new thing, church. And a new thing for some of us is you need to drop the old thing. Because sometimes we do old things and try to dress them up. But you can't dress up oldness. Oldness dressed up is just oldness dressed up. We need to do a new thing. And God wants us to do a new thing. And he was telling Isaiah to tell these people that I'm going to do a new thing. And God's speaking to us today. And he's letting us know right now that he's going to do a new thing. And it's a new thing that you can't figure out. Because every time we try to figure out God, we always mess it up. So he's going to do a new thing. And not just the church is like in your life personally, because somebody heard this message, and you know God's moving a new thing in your life. And being a new thing is sometimes you got to get the old thing right. Because some of the things we used to do, we need to get them right. So whatever we used to do, we need to get that right, correct that, and move on so God can use us. Sometimes God can't use us in a new thing because we can't get the, got the old thing right. Sometimes my parents wouldn't buy me something new until I shown that I cared about something that they gave me already. So God gave us some stuff and we showed that we didn't care about it. Like each other. Some people in the church can't even love one another. So a new thing for some of us would be loving one another. It may seem like it's a whole thing, but it's a new thing if you do it. If you're not doing it, it's not new to you. But when you start doing it, it's a new thing that God is able to use you. So as we you know, meditate on this word, we need to know that God's in our heart right now and he wants us to do a new thing. And a new thing is we need to serve him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind. Yes. And with everything that we got. That would be a new thing. And just let God be God in our lives. Because he's prepared right now to do a new thing in our lives. If we die. Amen? Amen. 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 Open us up that you will be able to do a new thing in us. That old thing's rehash, Lord, that's not you, that's not your way. You want to bring forth and spring forth a new thing in our lives. You want to show us that you are God in our lives, Lord. You want to show us that we too can step out in faith and you will be there, Lord, and make crooked ways straight. You will take mountains, Lord, and knock them flat. You will take walls and knock them down. You will open doors that are bolted and shut. You will open windows that are barred up. You will do all of this because you're going to do a new thing in our lives.